Hey, what's up, YouTube? Um, I wanted to revisit um, a video that I made about four or five years ago called Week 40, um, Racism as a Black FTM. And um, I wanted to revisit this video for a few reasons. One, um, you know, it's been some years since um, I've talked about dealing with the ways in which um, I experience race differently compared to my life pre-transition, and I just sort of want to put some things in context and also hopefully um, offer some helpful words to other guys out there who are in the earlier stages of their transition process. In the first video, in that original video, I talked about uh, a lot of things happening all at once. I was increasingly feeling like people were viewing me as a threat with people locking their car doors when I walked by in the street, people just engaging with me in weird ways that were somewhat aggressive in public, people watching me more closely. And so uh, these things started happening all at once. Um, now, years later, since making that video, I can definitely say that um, being read as a black man in public, um, coupled with living my life as a black man, um, has definitely changed my behavior. There are certain things that either I don't do or I'm super self-conscious about doing. One of those things being when I'm out in public, I try to look like I have a purpose. I'm not just somewhere aimlessly um, because in my experience, I find, I find that when that happens, um, then I tend to draw suspicions from other people. So I have a friend who's also black and trans and he was taking a walk in my neighborhood one night and my neighborhood is primarily white. And when he got back, um, he told me that he got stopped by someone, by a resident, and asked what he was doing in the neighborhood. And the first thought that came to my mind was, what were you doing? You know, taking a walk at night in a white neighborhood, wearing a hoodie. And of course I didn't say that to him because I realized that it's not his fault and black people should be free to take walks like anyone else. Um, but the fact that that was my first thought really shows how ingrained um, a lot of this uh, has become in my sort of subconsciousness in terms of um, behavior and certain things I can't do anymore or as freely, I should say, as freely as I could before. That's not to say that I don't go for walks, I do and I enjoy them. The fact that I now have to think about this, I think really speaks to the power that that damaging racist stereotypes about black men um, can affect me and affect how I how I behave or my thought processes about my behavior. Another thing I've um, been conscious about since transitioning and another behavior change is being careful uh, or at least conscious of how close I'm walking behind someone. This is something I did not think of at all um, prior to transition. But since transitioning, I've noticed that um, I'll get nervous glances, particularly if I'm behind women, regardless of the race, white women, black women. Um, and so now when I'm out in public, if I'm walking behind someone and that person's a woman, often what I'll do is I'll just walk quickly and pass the woman so that she's behind me. Um, and I want to say, though, that I understand um, the safety concerns um, for women, particularly those who are walking around at night. I remember when I was living as a black woman that I would be cautious about who was around me, being super vigilant, super conscious about my surroundings at night. I remember this moment in my transition where I thought about my own internalized racism during that time because I remember distinctly I did not um, react to white men or Asian men um, or even Latino men in the same way. It was specifically black men um, that I remember being on guard about. And I remember thinking that, you know, since beginning my transition, um, this sort of dual consciousness of going from, you know, seeing black men as a threat to actually embodying um, the threat in the, many, in the minds of many women. So, so while I do understand that um, men do pose a threat for women and why women uh, have to be extra cautious because of the threat um, of physical violence, I do think that black men are, are seen as aggressive, as predators, and I think in a way that other men aren't. Blackness as a whole is stigmatized and we're all socialized into a society that stigmatizes and penalizes blackness. Um, another behavior change for me since beginning my transition was sort of monitoring my responses um, to certain things so I'm not seen as um, angry black man. Um, this is the most I think of all the things I mentioned so far in terms of how my behaviors change, I think this is like the weirdest one for me. I mean, I remember being in situations where um, that would just escalate through no fault of my own. There was this one time when a group that um, I advised was having a party in a venue and I had made a reservation to use the space, um, but I noticed that there were other people using the space. 
Um, and so I went to the person in charge. I asked them, I was like, you know, I reserve this space and does that mean that we have sole use of it or does that mean other people are allowed to use it? Um, and she interpreted my question as hostile. She got really close in my face and was like, is there a problem? And I'm like, no, I'm just asking. <laughs> It was really weird. And, and so situations like this have definitely happened a lot more since transitioning. And though I can't, um, I can't, I can never prevent that from happening. Um, I do try to be extra polite, extra courteous than I normally would be um, with strangers, particularly if they're, if they're white folks. Cause I, I feel like I have to disarm people because based on how I look, um, you know, they may read anything um, that I say or do as aggressive. So I've been thinking about all this and I've been sort of linking um, my experiences that I just talked about in this video and in previous videos to the sort of whole Black Lives Matter movement. And, you know, specifically with, you know, the, the things that I've sort of learned to either not do or do or just be conscious about, you know, my behavior in a different way. So for example, with the sort of being conscious about how I, how my behavior looks when I'm in public, making sure I look like I have a purpose. There was a man in Michigan who was um, walking with his hands in his pockets because it was cold outside and he got stopped by the cops. You know, if we think about Trayvon Martin, for example, like he was someone who was walking, you know, to his home and George Zimmerman said, you know, he looked like he was um, up to something and um, like he was on drugs and I don't say that to blame Trayvon Martin in any way for his death He's not to blame but I say that I point this out to to say that you know innocuous actions uh, Can take on a totally different meaning and be seen as threatening or hostile or dangerous If it's in the context of a black body doing these actions so to the black trans men um, who are watching this and you know, especially those in the earlier stages of their transition, just understand that you're not the problem. Like I said before, the problem is how our society stigmatizes and penalizes blackness and has nothing to do with you. And I think there'll come a time when, you know, that you'll need to understand through your own experiences what these sort of unspoken rules are for black men and deciding how you're going to respond to that, whether it's like, you know what, I think I need to do X, Y, and Z in order to survive or if it's to be like, you know what, F it, I'm going to do what I want. At least being conscious of what could happen to you when you do certain things, I think is something that's really uh, important to think about and keep in mind. Another thing I would say, I guess, to uh, black trans men watching this who are particularly those in the earlier stages of their transition, who are dealing, beginning to deal with these um, issues that come up, definitely take the time to vent. Um, Self-care is super important. It's, it's really frustrating and it's really jarring it can be really painful. Um, when I actually made that video on uh, week 40, uh, racism as a black FTM, when I made that video, um, I was recently out of a hospital. Um, I had a breakdown. I, all these things came to a head. All these things were happening at once with the stairs, with the profiling, um, with the aggressive interactions with people and um, I couldn't handle it. And so um, I was in a psychiatric ward for a hospital for about a week. Race, and it's been, there's research about this that, you know, racism does have an adverse impact on the health of black people. Um, and, and I can definitely testify to that. So self-care is super, super important. You're not the problem. The rest of our society is. I wish I could say it gets better, but it, it, it doesn't. But there are things that we can do to sort of take care of ourselves in the meantime. Take care, stay strong, peace.